So let's examine the following example that deals with two batteries and two resistors placed into the following electric circuit. So we have battery 1 with a voltage of 60 volts and battery 2 with a voltage of 48 volts. So we have resistor 1 with a resistance of 120 ohms and resistor 2 with a resistance of 70 ohms. So we essentially want to apply Kirchhoff's rules to find the electric current that passes through this resistor as well as the electric current that passes through this 70 ohm resistor. So let's begin by applying Kirchhoff's first rule, which basically tells us that the electric current that goes into any junction is equal to the electric current that leaves that same junction. In other words, electric current is conserved. So let's choose our junction to be junction A. So the electric current that flows into junction A given by I1 is equal to the current that flows out of our junction A, so the sum of I2 and I3. So I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So let's call this equation 1. Now, let's move on to step B. In step B, we want to apply the second rule. So let's apply Kirchhoff's second rule, which basically tells us that the change in our voltage across any closed loop inside our electric circuit is always equal to zero. So let's choose two closed loops. So let's choose loop A, B, C, D and back to A as loop number one and then let's choose A, D, E, A. So A, D, E, A as the second closed loop. So let's begin with this loop. So we essentially are moving from point A to point B. Our electric current flows from point A to point B and it's given by I2. Now because this is a positive charge and we go from negative to positive electrode within our battery, this change is positive. So we have positive 48 volts. Next, our electric current given by I2 passes from point B to point C. And because it's going from a higher potential to a lower potential, this will be a drop in voltage. So it's given by negative I2 multiplied by the 70 ohm resistance. So, Next, we're moving from C to D, and that basically doesn't change anything because we're neglecting the resistance inside our wire. And finally, we go from point D to point A. Now, notice in this section, we have current given by I3. And notice we're going in the opposite direction of this current, so that means the change must be positive. So we have positive I3 multiplied by 120 ohms. And this sum is equal to zero because we end up at the same exact position. This is a closed loop. So we can rearrange this equation and we get 120 I3 minus 70 I2 is equal to 48 volts. Now let's move on to loop A, D, E, A. So we begin at point A and we go to point D and notice we have current I3 and it's negative so it's decreasing. So negative I3 multiplied by 120 ohms. So next we go from point D to point E and notice we go from negative to positive. So this change is positive. So we have positive 60 volts and from E to A that does nothing. So that means this is equal to zero. So, let's take this equation and solve it for I3. So we see I3 is equal to 60 volts divided by 120 ohms and that gives us an electric current of 0.5 amps. So the electric current that goes through this 120 ohm resistor is given to be 0 0.5 ohms. So now we can use this result and this equation to essentially solve for I2. In fact, we don't even need to use this result from part A. So let's move on to part C and calculate what the quantity of I2 is.
So from this equation, we see that I2 is equal to 120I3 minus 48 volts divided by 70 ohms. So we know from this result that our I3 is simply 0.5. So we have 120 multiplied by 0.5 minus 48 divided by 70 gives us about 0.17 amps.